Okay, while we're still looking at linear transformations, um, the last type we're going to look at is rotations. This is where we have a, a matrix um, that can rotate a vector or, or another matrix. Um, and for all of these linear transformation examples, we've been using the vector 1, 2. This is, I think that's pretty easy and simple to understand. So here's 1, 2. So we're going to look at uh, matrices that can rotate this one, uh, however far we want. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to give you the keys to be able to do whatever obscure angle you want. And we're going to look at a couple different examples. Um, so the general uh, rotation matrix looks like this. Cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, where theta is the amount that you want to rotate uh, going counterclockwise. So let's look at a couple of different angles and see what this results in. Uh, let's start with 90 degrees. Um, that's the same as pi over 2. Okay, so cosine of pi over 2 is 1. No, it's 0. Sorry. Uh, negative sine of pi over 2 is going to be negative 1. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. And cosine of pi over 2, again, is 0. Um, so what does that look like for this vector? Uh, multiply that out, we get a negative 2 on top and a 1. So let's go negative 2 and up 1. So that's our new vector. And this vector is the same as that one, only uh, rotated 90 degrees. We started here, and now we're there. And that is a 90 degree angle. And both vectors are the same size. So let's try 180 degrees. That's the same as pi. Um, so cosine of pi, I know my trick. That's 1. Um, sine of pi is 0. That's 0. And cosine again is 1. Negative 1. OK. So that's just the identity matrix multiplied by negative 1. So as can be expected, we'd get negative 1, negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2. That's another 90 degrees from where we first were. That's 180 degrees turned from where we started. And it's basically just a scaling um, of this original vector by negative 1, so in the opposite direction. Cool. Um, just for kicks, let's try 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. So for cosine, that's 0 both times. And uh, sine of 3 pi over 2 is minus 1. And that's going to be positive 1. So here we get 2 and negative 1. We go out 2, down 1. That's our last vector. Another 90 degrees. So here we have each of the uh, four points of a circle. Um, what if our, our angle is not a function of 90 degrees? Um, I just did those because it's the easiest to compute. 
um, with polar coordinates, but let's do 45 degrees as well. Uh, that's pi over 4. Um, so cosine of pi over 4 and sine of pi over 4 are the same thing. It's the square root of 2 over 2. And just because that's minus sine, we'll get negative square root of 2 over 2. Cool. Now, just because I'm lazy and I don't really want to multiply out square roots, I'm going to multiply this entire thing by a scaling factor, um, like we did in the video transformation scaling. I'm just going to uh, scale this entire matrix by the reciprocal of this, so I'm going to get ones everywhere. Okay, so this is a scaled version uh, of a rotation by 45 degrees. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And we should get a vector um, not the same size as the one we started with because we scaled it, but just turned 45 degrees. And there we have it. Um, this angle will bisect that one and that one, which was our original vector and that was 90 degrees. So here's 45 degrees. Um, and if we want, we can scale that back down to the original size of the vector. But just because that involves square roots and stuff, I didn't really want to handle that kind of stuff. Um, so with this matrix, you can do any angle you can possibly think of. Um, you can do 28 degrees or 500 degrees, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is just your catch-all for, um, for rotating. And you'll notice you can also scale things, uh, as I did here, by combining a scaling matrix with such a rotation matrix. Um, so now you can not only get an angle pointing in any direction you want, you can get any length you want as well. So uh, if you need to review any of the other videos, just go back and check, watch those again. Otherwise, keep watching for more linear algebra help. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.